What's up you guys, welcome back. So today, I'm gonna talk to you guys about what it's like to be a felon. <laughs> it's so glamorous, let me tell you. Um, no, so I get a lot of questions about what life was like after prison. Um, so I just kinda wanna like break that down for you. If you guys hear weird noises, my dog has a tomahawk ribeye bone and she's obsessed with it. I have a husky, so she's like, she wants to play with it and like pretend she killed it, I don't know. So let's get started. Um, my first year out of prison was probably like the hardest year of my life. It was, it was difficult in a way that I wasn't expecting um, because every other time I, got, I had gotten out of jail, it was just right back to it. Selling drugs, doing drugs, whatever. Uh, running from parole, I've done that several times. So I never actually tried to be like a productive member of society or like tried to get a job or tried to do it the real way. Um, and the reason why I did it this last time was because my daughter, my first child, was born while I was in prison. And that was freaking horrifying. And I will talk to you guys more about that as my channel progresses. Um, but the first challenge um, to anyone getting out of prison is to find a job. That's like the hardest thing. Now, um, my first job was at a telemarketing place. And the prison that I went to did not give me a state issued ID. So I didn't have like a driver's license or anything. I didn't have a prison ID. I didn't have a birth certificate or social security card. So like literally, you guys, like I just sales talked to them into giving me a job. I just told them straight up, I am who I say I am. I need a job. I'm wearing prison shower shoes right now, like flip flops to this interview. Like, I'm sorry, but like I'll stay here all day. I'll work as hard as you, hard as you need me to work, you know? So that's just what I did. Um, then I started working a second job at a smoke place, a smoke shop, like a, a vapor store. So I started working there. The telemarketing job paid seven fifty an hour, but I could work like as many hours as I wanted, so that was cool. Um, and then the smoke shop paid like eight fifty, but I was able to talk them up to ten dollars an hour. So I was working two jobs and really struggling. Um, but finally, when I saved up enough money to get my own place in Northwest Arkansas. Um, I would fill out these applications for apartments and every single time I was turned down, which wasn't, like it wouldn't have been that bad if they didn't charge me $25 per application to like do a background check, you know? So not only did I have to pay the $25 over and over and over and over again, so it does add up, but then like they had to just tell me to my face no and it was so embarrassing. So I could not find a place to live because I was a felon with drug charges and they don't want a drug dealer living in their apartment building, you know? So that was the hardest thing, um, second hardest thing. So I just had to keep pushing and finally, <laughs> I remember getting my first apartment. It was actually a duplex and I had a roommate but I went to go look at this place and I just broke down to this guy. I'm like, look, man, if you don't rent to me, I'm gonna lose my daughter. She's in DHS custody. I need to rent this house. Please, I have the money. Please just let me rent from you. And I was just crying in this kitchen, right? So he just says, okay, I'm gonna give you a chance. I'm gonna rent this to you. Now, as I'm like crying and having a meltdown in this kitchen, I signed this lease. I'm like bawling even more because I'm so grateful, you know? Um, cause it had taken me months to find one person to give me a chance to rent to me. So I'm crying in this kitchen and I leave without even realizing there was no refrigerator. So I was like, oh my God, like when I moved in, I'm like, I just assumed that there would be one, you know? So it was like, oh my God, now I don't have a refrigerator and they cost so much freaking money. So I just, I was so happy to have a place, but at the same time it's like, well shit, now I need a fridge. It was so stupid. Um, so Oh, long story short, I got a better job um, right before I got my daughter back. I now have full custody of her, and she's six, and she's a terror. Um, so I got a better job at a transportation company, which I was so grateful for, and that's where I met my boyfriend of five years. Um, we worked at the same place. So um, after a while of working there, I realized there was really no career advancement for me there, and I wanted to work at a bigger company. And I'll just tell you, it was J.B. Hunt. So I really wanted to work at J.B. Hunt. I knew, the I knew the environment, I knew it was fast paced and I knew I could move up and it was kind of like boiler room meets like 2018 like transportation, you know what I mean? So like people are hustling on the floor and I just, I wanted to work there so bad. Just like a little backstory, I would take my daughter to daycare and drive by this big fancy corporate building that's in Northwest Arkansas and I just wanted to work there so bad. So I finally got an interview and I go in, I was so nervous, but I'm a really good interviewer. And I interviewed and they really liked me. And then one of the VPs came to talk to me and he said, um, yeah, I, I like you, I'd like to add you to my team. Um, we'll get you that offer letter, blah, blah, blah. 
And I was just elated, but then I was like, you're a felon, tell him. <laughs> so I said, hey man, um, I've wanted to work here for a long time, but I just have to tell you, um, I am a felon. It's been years since I committed a felony. I will be your, the hardest worker, blah, blah, blah. I kind of just go through my whole spell. And he said, you know what? We'll find a way to work around it. So about a week goes by, they give me the offer letter. I was just on top of the world. I signed it and returned it. And I was just so excited to start my new career. So I left my old job. And I really thought like, I made it. Like this is the moment where I made it, you know? So I start my, or I left my old job and I went out and I bought all these new clothes <laughs> to start my job and I was just so freaking excited. And a few days later, about a week away from my start date, JB Hunt called me and said, someone from the top, topity top, said, we don't hire felons, sorry. I have to take back the letter or take back our offer to you. And I was like, what? Uh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Lady, I just quit my job. Do you not understand that? And she was like, I'm sorry. There's something we can do. And I cried for two days. I was so upset. I was so pissed off. So after I went through like my two day, like I'm depressed and this sucks and I need blah, blah, blah. I just spent all this money on clothes. Like I left my job. After I kind of like the shock wore off, I said, okay, let's go. Let's get back to work. So I put in application after application after application. Now I could get a job at McDonald's. Um, <laughs> or like Walmart as a cashier for minimum wage. And I'm sorry, but no one can live off minimum wage. It sucks. It's, it's hard. I have a kid. I have all these bills. Um, so I interviewed at all of the places in that industry in Northwest Arkansas. And they all told me they don't hire felons. And that was just so difficult. So um, it took me a few months to kind of decide what I wanted to do with my life, you know? And I just decided, you know what? Go to school and help felons. So that kind of brings me to like my next topic. Next year I'll graduate with my bachelor's degree and I'm gonna work in any prison or rehab that'll take me. But I started my YouTube channel to bring awareness to that life and to bring awareness to how difficult it is for felons outside of prison and why people keep going back. You know, I hear a lot of people or I read all the comments um, on other channels. Everyone's been really supportive on my channel and I appreciate it so much, but I do read other comments on social media and everything else. And people are like, if you don't like prison, don't go. But listen, you guys, it's so difficult. You know, you get out of prison and you have fines, restitution, parole fees, you have to eat, you have to get a place, you have to get a car, you have to start from zero, you know? So that's very difficult to do. And if you're starving and you're hungry and you're about to be homeless, you're gonna do whatever it takes to stay off of the street, right? So we just push all these, these offenders out into the world and, they, and we tell them, go get your life together. <laughs> go, you're free, peace out, good luck. And then they're pushed into a society that is not welcoming to them. So that is the purpose of this video, to just kind of shed light on it. So without it being like a 30 minute video, the last thing I'm gonna show you guys is, um, I have moments where I forget that I'm a felon because it has been years. Um, I'm finally off of parole, which I've never been able to say in my life. I've been on paper since I was 13 and I'm almost 30, I'm 29. So that's a long time of going to jail and constantly being on paper. So um, yeah, I'm finally off of that, but I decided since other people were telling me on Facebook, you can vote, you're, you know, that's, that's an old rule, blah, blah, blah. Uh, New Yorkers can vote now. They're changing the laws with job applications and voter rights, which is amazing. So I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna try, but okay, so let me just show you guys. Oh, this, is, this has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but my brother went to jail and he drew this for me. How talented is he? It says Micah, which is my daughter's name. Dude is like talented. He needs to design some tattoos for me. Okay, moving on. I applied to vote and uh, they told me no. So I'm just gonna read that to you guys. Your application has been canceled, underlined, like no, <laughs> due to the following reasons. Information was received from the Department of Community Corrections per the Secretary of State office indicating that you have been convicted of a felony or seven. Um, Arkansas law requires that voter registers cancel their voter registration of a convicted felon within 10 days, blah, 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 blah. So basically, no, the felons cannot vote in the South or live or breathe. So I just want to share that with you guys. Um, one of my friends is a felon and she can vote in New York. She got to vote last year. So I don't know if like every state is different. If you guys know more, please let me know. Um, but I'm going to end this video with saying if you just got out of prison, 
that first year is so hard, but keep pushing, keep fighting because freedom is absolutely worth it. Spending time with your family and not going back to prison is worth anything. So do not give up. It's not, that struggle won't last forever, you know? Keep fighting. I love you guys. I'll see you next time.